You're listening to the Weekly Bible Lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. This is the lesson for Sunday, May 9, 2021. Subject, Adam and Fallen Man. The golden text is from James. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The responsive reading is from Isaiah. Be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. I will read from the Bible. Psalms O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hast set thy glory above the heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, Thou hast put all things under his feet. Genesis And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. 
For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Proverbs Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Psalms Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Ephesians This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 
2 Corinthians. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 1 Corinthians For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence. Truth in truthfulness. God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Love, redolent with unselfishness, bathes all in beauty and light. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father-Mother God. Man is not made to till the soil. His birthright is dominion, not subjection. He is Lord of the belief in earth and heaven, himself subordinate alone to his Maker. Life is, always has been, and ever will be independent of matter. For life is God and man is the idea of God, not formed materially, but spiritually, and not subject to decay and dust. Deity was satisfied with his work. How could he be otherwise, since the spiritual creation was the outgrowth, the emanation of his infinite self-containment and immortal wisdom. The great mistake of mortals is to suppose that man, God's image and likeness, is both matter and spirit, both good and evil. Genesis 2, 6 But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. The second chapter of Genesis contains a statement of this material view of God and the universe, a statement which is the exact opposite of scientific truth as before recorded. The first record assigns all might and government to God and endows man out of God's perfection and power. The second record chronicles man as mutable and mortal, as having broken away from deity, and as revolving in an orbit of his own. Existence separate from divinity, science explains as impossible. This second record unmistakably gives the history of error in its externalized forms, called Life and Intelligence in Matter. It records pantheism, opposed to the supremacy of divine spirit. But this state of things is declared to be temporary, and this man to be mortal, dust returning to dust. 
The name Adam represents the false supposition that life is not eternal, but has beginning and end, that the infinite enters the finite, that intelligence passes into non-intelligence, and that soul dwells in material sense, that immortal mind results in matter, and matter in mortal mind, that the one God and Creator entered what he created and then disappeared in the atheism of matter. Evil still affirms itself to be mind and declares that there is more than one intelligence or God. It says, There shall be lords and gods many, I declare that God makes evil minds and evil spirits, and that I aid him. Truth shall change sides and be unlike spirit. I will put spirit into what I call matter, and matter shall seem to have life as much as God, spirit, who is the only life. This error has proved itself to be error. Its life is found to be not life, but only a transient, false sense of an existence which ends in death. Man was not created from a material basis, nor bidden to obey material laws which spirit never made. His province is in spiritual statutes, in the higher law of mind. Above error's awful din, blackness, and chaos, the voice of truth still calls, Adam, where art thou? Consciousness, where art thou? Art thou dwelling in the belief that mind is in matter? and that evil is mind? Or art thou in the living faith that there is and can be but one God, and keeping his commandments? Until the lesson is learned that God is the only mind governing man, mortal belief will be afraid, as it was in the beginning, and will hide from the demand Where art thou? This awful demand, Adam, where art thou, is met by the admission from the head, heart, stomach, blood, nerves, etc. Lo, here I am, looking for happiness and life in the body, but finding only an illusion a blending of false claims, false pleasure, pain, sin, sickness, and death. Whatever indicates the fall of man, or the opposite of God, or God's absence, is the Adam dream, which is neither mind nor man, for it is not begotten of the Father. Truth has but one reply to all error, to sin, sickness, and death. Dust, nothingness, thou art, and unto dust, nothingness, shalt thou return. As in Adam, error, all die, even so in Christ, truth, shall all be made alive. The mortality of man is a myth, for man is immortal. The false belief that spirit is now submerged in matter, at some future time to be emancipated from it, this belief alone is mortal. Spirit God never germinates, but is the same yesterday and today and forever. Mortals must gravitate Godward, 
their affections and aims grow spiritual. They must near the broader interpretations of being and gain some proper sense of the infinite in order that sin and mortality may be put off. This scientific sense of being, forsaking matter for spirit, by no means suggests man's absorption into deity and the loss of his identity, but confers upon man enlarged individuality, a wider sphere of thought and action, a more expansive love, a higher and more permanent peace. The relations of God and man, divine principle and idea, are indestructible in science. And science knows no lapse from nor return to harmony, but holds the divine order or spiritual law in which God and all that he creates are perfect and eternal to have remained unchanged in its eternal history. Entirely separate from the belief and dream of material living is the life divine, revealing spiritual understanding and the consciousness of man's dominion over the whole earth. This understanding casts out error and heals the sick. And with it, you can speak as one having authority. Through discernment of the spiritual opposite of materiality, even the way through Christ truth, man will reopen with the key of divine science the gates of paradise, which human beliefs have closed, and will find himself unfallen upright, pure, and free. I will now read the three daily duties from the Church Manual by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this Church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A Rule for Motives and Acts Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to Duty it shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. And from Science and Health. Christian Scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you, 
either when asleep or when awake. This Bible lesson was prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.